In 1965, a cinematic gem hit the screens The Great Race. Ever wondered about the amusing, jaw-dropping, and even heart-wrenching tales behind this classic? Well, buckle up, because there's a lot more to discover. This isn't just any movie. It's a journey through laughter, surprises, and a dash of melancholy. When did you first witness the on-screen antics that left an impression on you? Or maybe you have a cherished memory tied to this cinematic spectacle? As the plot unfolds, be ready for a roller coaster of emotions. It's not just about racing, it's about the human spirit sprinkled with humor that stands the test of time. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience connected to this cinematic masterpiece? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep the conversation rolling and let's relive those moments together. And remember, there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting to be unveiled, so keep watching. Stay tuned for more insights into this classic. The Great Race is a film that has received mixed reviews and my perspective aligns more with those who found it lacking. The narrative appears to be a disjointed assortment of gags and jokes that often fall flat. Some elements seem out of place, seemingly inserted without relevance to the overall story, giving the impression of an attempt to divert attention from the film's shortcomings. The production, while boasting a talented cast, feels like a misuse of resources and time. The movie follows the rivalry between Professor Fate, played by Jack Lemmon, and the great Leslie, portrayed by Tony Curtis. The characters engage in an extensive race from New York to Paris, encountering various comedic misadventures along the way. Supported by mechanic Jedediah, played by Keenan Wynn, and persistently bothered by suffragette reporter Miss Dubois, played by Natalie Wood, the story unfolds across different locations, including the Wild West, the Arctic Circle, Russia, and Eastern Europe. Despite its flaws, The Great Race offers moments of slapstick humor and features a series of well-executed set pieces that underscore its significant production costs. The performances, particularly those of Lemon and Peter Falk in roles reminiscent of Dick Dastardly and Muttley, contribute to the film's lighthearted and innocent comedic tone. For some viewers, the film holds a nostalgic charm, especially considering the directorial prowess of Blake Edwards before his later Pink Panther endeavors. The ensemble cast, with standout performances by Lemon, Curtis, Wood, Falk, Larry Storch, and Ross Martin, adds to the movie's appeal. The dialogue, occasionally unconventional, prevents the film from becoming formulaic, drawing inspiration from classic comedy movies like It's a Mad World. In summary, The Great Race, while not universally acclaimed, has its moments of comedic brilliance. Its slapstick humor and memorable performances make it a defining comedy for some, despite its narrative shortcomings. Amidst the chaos of the pie fight in The Great Race, one figure emerged unscathed the great Leslie. Tony Curtis, facing a constant barrage of pies, changed his clothes multiple times during filming to evade the inevitable splatters. As the film's budget surged from $6 million to $12 million, tensions flared between director Blake Edwards and Warner Brothers head Jack L. Warner. Accusations of extravagant spending were met with claims of tight-fistedness. Warner, resorting to legal measures, sought Edwards' removal. Despite concessions, Edwards persisted, navigating the turbulent production waters. Loosely inspired by a 1908 event, the great race mirrors the greatest auto race. Commencing on February 12, six competitors raced from New York City, spanning three continents, culminating in Paris. Rooted in humor and historical inspiration, the great race, though facing its share of challenges, managed to deliver a memorable cinematic experience. In the great race, a quirky detail stands out as a moose head on Professor Fate's wall, a nod to a gag from Ernie Kovacs' TV show. Jack Lemmon, a friend of Kovacs, incorporated this comedic touch into the film. Exiting the dining room, the moose's full form is revealed in the foyer, showcasing Lemon's playful homage. Adding authenticity to her role, Maggie Dubois, played by Natalie Wood, claims language proficiency in French, Russian, and Arabic. Wood, of Russian descent, fluently spoke Russian, lending credibility to her character's linguistic prowess. The iconic Hannibal 8 Professor Fate's vehicle boasted a Corvair six-cylinder engine and a three-speed transmission. Six of these cars, each costing $150,000, were crafted for the movie. Notably, three featured the fragile Lazy Tongs lifting mechanism, a design prone to constant breakage during filming. 
These behind-the-scenes details enrich the great race experience, showcasing Lemon's humor, Wood's linguistic authenticity, and the intricate engineering of the Hannibal 8. Despite challenges, the film on the expansive Warner Brothers lot, the iconic ice flow sequence unfolded within the colossal Stage 16. Originally named Stage 7 in the studio's early days, this towering soundstage was later elevated and reinforced to accommodate tall masted ships. The movie's melting ice flow was ingeniously rigged, with a section affixed to cables and another portion manipulated underwater, creating the illusion for Professor Fate's precarious situation. In the realm of slapstick history, it claims the title for the lengthiest pie fight, a four-minute spectacle that spanned five demanding days of shooting. Initially a light-hearted endeavor, the scene took a toll on the cast. Natalie Wood experienced a momentary challenge as a pie found its way into her open mouth, while Jack Lemmon, embodying Professor Fate, endured knocks that felt like a ton of cement. The chaotic climax culminated with a surprise onslaught of hidden pies unleashed upon director Blake Edwards' call of cut. Jack Lemmon's portrayal of Professor Fate left an enduring mark, garnering acclaim even from his son, Chris Lemmon. In an interview, Chris expressed the belief that this role stood as his father's finest cinematic achievement. He himself attested to the impact, acknowledging that fate attracted more viewer mail than any other character he brought to life. In summary, memorable moments from the staged ice flow on Warner Brothers' towering Stage 16 to the record-setting pie fight showcase the film's ingenuity and the enduring impact of Jack Lemmon's portrayal, making it a standout in the annals of cinematic history. In one notable scene of the great race, Professor Fate and Max find themselves in a daring car chase with a train. The car is cleverly attached to the front of the locomotive by a short bar, and the track is specially prepared to protect the car's tires from damage. Another subtle detail unfolds in the opening sequences involving a torpedo. Professor Fate employs a spyglass, while Max uses binoculars. This serves as a hidden sight gag as Peter Falk, who portrays Max, had a prosthetic eye. During the gripping opening balloon sequence, Tony Curtis, playing Leslie, executes a daring stunt. Dangling upside down from the balloon, he escapes from a straitjacket. Interestingly, Curtis had previously performed a similar stunt in the 1953 film Houdnia, where he was on a flagpole. These understated yet intriguing details add depth to the great race, showcasing the meticulous planning and creative choices made in the film's production. The car chase's innovative setup, the clever sight gag with the spyglass and binoculars, and the daring stunt by Tony Curtis all contribute to the film's unique charm, making it a captivating piece of cinematic history. Natalie Wood, initially reluctant, agreed to star in The Great Race as part of a deal with Jack L. Warner. Unhappy with her career and personal life, Wood saw this film as a gateway to her desired role in Gavin Lambert's Inside Daisy Clover. During the performance of The Sweetheart Tree in the film, lyrics are displayed on screen with a bouncing ball, prompting audience participation, a technique reminiscent of early talkies, and animated cartoons coining the phrase, follow the bouncing ball. The world premiere of The Great Race took place at the Panages Theater in Los Angeles on July 1, 1965. A black tie affair, tickets ranged from 25 to 100, with almost all proceeds benefiting the Crippled Children's Guild of Orthopedic Hospital. In summary, Wood's initial reluctance, the unique audience engagement technique during the Sweetheart Tree, and the grand world premiere at Panage's Theater are noteworthy aspects of the great race, underscoring its significance in cinema history. Jack L. Warner's attempt to entice Natalie Wood with a share of Tony Curtis royalties for The Great Race failed as Curtis declined, citing their strained relationship from previous collaborations. Life magazine covered the film's pie fight scene, capturing the moment with the distinct sound of the camera's shutter before the musical accompaniment began. The Potsdorf sequence, notably the duel between Leslie and the Baron, parodies The Prisoner of Zenda, a recurring theme in films where a prince is kidnapped and replaced by an imposter. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a glimpse into the dynamics on set and the film's cultural references, enhancing its historical context. The Great Race, capturing the essence of its era, remains a fascinating cinematic piece with its unique production details.